What is going on you guys and welcome back to the film room. Got a quick one for you today talking about the release of J.J. Watt, three-time defensive player of the year from the Houston Texans and whether or not the Cowboys should, would, or even could if they would sign J.J. Watt. Watt of course was slated to make $17.5 million this upcoming season with the Houston Texans but with the release of all that money is dropped off of the table. So Watt hitting free agency, going to be looking for a new contract, and I'm sure is already receiving calls. Or even, as you saw Demarcus Lawrence tweet, text. Hopefully those two were able to link up a little bit, maybe talk about something that could potentially be there. But of course, what matters is what the guys in the front office think. And well, uh, with the Jones family, you just never really know there have been some questionable decisions as far as who we have paid and who we have not paid, <laughs> Jalen Smith and Byron Jones. Uh, but that's besides the point. So yeah, you just never really know what the Jones family is basically what I'm getting at there. But as far as what I think about J.J. Watt, obviously, if we can make the money work, we can bring this guy in and he's going to be an instant impact player. And I think we can utilize him in multiple ways and he will have an impact and such. Of course, with Randy Gregory and Demarcus Lawrence likely being our two starting defensive ends going into the season, I think if we did bring in J.J. Watt, we would put him inside at the three tech. And of course, we know he can be a monster from there as well. And then when Randy or Demarcus Lawrence may not be on the field at the same time, all three of those guys aren't on the field at the same time, he obviously can move out to the edge and be dominant from there as well. As far as what a contract for J.J. Watt might look like, I'm thinking he's just going to be a guy that's going to be signing a one- or two-year deal at this point in his career. He's on the other side of 30. His play may not be what it once was, but I still think he can be a dominant player and have a very positive impact on the game. So with that being said, I think he's just going to take these one-year, maybe 12 to 15 million mercenary-type contracts. Of course, just depending on how teams are approaching him, what offers he's getting, what price he's demanding, we don't know any of that information yet. So it's hard to tell exactly what kind of contract we would be looking at for J.J. Watt. And hey, you never know, maybe he'll take a little bit of a discount to come over and uh, wear the star on his helmet. Maybe he's looking at some opportunities post-career, uh, maybe a career in broadcasting or something. You know, uh, being a Dallas Cowboy has its advantages when it comes to that at the very least. But assuming that we would get J.J. Watt at the flat rate that every other team would, I'm thinking probably a one-year, two-year, 12 to $15 million a year would be my guess. I don't think he's going to be at the $17.5 million a year that he was looking to be getting with the Texans if he was able to stay with them. I think regardless, if he even didn't ask to be released, he would have been released. Like I said, on the other side of 30, coming off a five-sack year, I don't think the Texans, a team that's kind of in a rebuilding phase, would be looking to pay a defensive end $17.5 million at this point in their franchise. So say we do get J.J. Watt in here for a one-year, we'll say $14 million deal. Is that plausible? Well, of course, you can always restructure contracts. There's room to do that. I don't think we'll be bringing back as many players as we might like in our free in terms of our free agents i think guys like jordan lewis jobe woozy xavier woods are up in the air and then guys as far as like tyrone crawford i think they're out of here alden smith i think will be gone as well so say we do bring in jj watt then i do think we could make this space work however that is all barring whether or not or what we do with Dak Prescott, I think that needs to be prioritized first before we can even take a glance at J.J. Watt. Uh, I think we need to know what kind of contracts he's going to be on. If we can get him a back-heavy contract, then maybe we can have some more room to bring in some free agents now. And obviously, this all depends, too, on whether or not we ha maybe have our eyes in other places in terms of free agency, maybe at a cheaper price, or if we're just looking to improve in that defensive end to three tech area in the draft now assuming we get Dak figured out sometime soon hopefully that uh by some crazy miracle that happens and we do have the money to go after a guy like jj watt do i think we'll do it uh the answer for me is no it just doesn't seem like after the free agent whiffs that the jones family took last year 
in the off season, it just doesn't seem likely that we're going to take a shot at a guy like J.J. Watt on the back end of his career. And while I do think he could be an impact player, it seems to me like the Jones family, instead of trying to make a big splash in free agency, uh, might just try to build through the draft or just keep guys on like Dorns Armstrong and continue to develop them. So yeah, guys, while I don't think this is something that is likely to happen or will happen, it's still fun to talk about, gauge your guys' thoughts on. Definitely comment below. Let me know what you think of this whole situation, if we should be going after J.J. Watt, uh, if we should sign Dak Prescott, get him figured out before we even do anything in free agency. Definitely let me know what you guys think about all of that. Personally, I do hope we can find a way to bring him in. I don't see the downside of it. I think we could make the money work if we wanted to, especially if we signed Dak and got him on a back-heavy contract. I think there is potential for the money to be there. And even if it is just a one-year, two-year deal, I do think it could boost this defense significantly, especially if we have him lined up at the three-tech and D-Law and Randy Gregory are healthy on the outside. I think having him inside would open up space for the other guys, knowing that the quarterback can't just step up into the pocket like many quarterbacks have been able to do against us and maybe not letting D-Law or Randy Gregory's rushes get home as much as they could. And also, just knowing how downright awful our run defense has been as of late, and especially up the middle, having J.J. Watt there to help patch that up could be huge for this defense. That is going to be the end of this video, though. I appreciate you guys for stopping by. Definitely comment below. Let me know what you think of all this. Don't forget to subscribe as well and like the video. We're so close to 2,000 subscribers. Can't thank you guys enough for that. And once again, guys, thank you for stopping by, and I will see you on the next video.